Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, in which we are discussing the mechanism of action of chloramphenicol, uh, which is also called clomitromycin. So we've seen how chloramphenicol, or clomitromycin, blocks the activity of the enzyme peptidyl transferase and therefore prevents uh, the ribosome from transferring uh, the amino acid on the um, tRNA in the P-site onto uh, the amino acid, well, onto the tRNA in the A site, basically. Uh, so, um, what we now want to see is uh, how translation continues after that. So, so far, what we've got to is um, this stage here. So, let me draw out what stage we're at. We have our 30S ribosomal subunit here, okay? We then have our mRNA sitting in here, okay? like so. We have, let me bring this up a bit, uh, we have a 50S ribosomal subunit below here. So this is our 50S ribosomal subunit. And then we have the shine dalgano sequence here. Okay, so that's the shine dalgano sequence. I'll colour it in orange, which is the colour we've been using to denote the shine dalgano sequence for a long time. Then, uh, downstream of that, we have this um, this um, well, well, this start codon here, which we've always denoted in pink. And then after that, we have this second codon on the mRNA, which we'll have here, which was coloured in blue in our previous um, picture. So there is our second codon, basically. Okay, now, um, we uh, initially had a 4 methionine tRNA bound to this um, start codon. But now, when the second amino acid, uh, sorry, amino acyl tRNA came in, uh, that uh, formal methionine amino acid on this first uh, tRNA was transferred onto the um, amino acid on the second amino acyl tRNA. So you've now got this second tRNA bound to two amino acids with a dipeptide like so. Now, the next process that has to happen is happen is the um, ribosome basically has to move along the mRNA. So it's done as much as it can do with all of this RNA at the moment. What it needs to do is bring this um, this second codon into the P site. Basically, it needs to put it in the position where the first codon is at the moment, and it needs to bring in the third codon, which I'll colour in green here. It needs to bring that third codon into uh, the A site, basically. So what it's going to do is it's going to uh, basically move along the mRNA. And I want to stress it's the ribosome uh, that moves along the mRNA. Okay, so it's going to move along the mRNA, like so. And uh, what's going to happen is this shine dalgano sequence is now going to be out here, maybe. And um, here is now this start codon here then the second codon, then the third codon, and then here's the 50S ribosomal subunit, which has shrunk a bit, but never mind, and we'll have the shine dalgano sequence there. Okay, so let me colour everything in so that you can see exactly what's happened. Here's the shine dalgano sequence. Here's the start codon here. Um, here is the uh, second codon here. Okay. Right. And here is the third codon here. Okay, right. Uh, so, uh, now the um, tRNAs that were bound to these codons move too. So, this uh, tRNA is over here now. This is the tRNA that was bound to the start codon. Here is the tRNA which was bound to the second codon with now two amino acids bound to it. The amino acid that that tRNA originally came in with and this formal methionine tRNA and now we've got this third codon which is ready and waiting. So the third codon is now in the A site, the second codon is in the P site and the third codon is in, uh, sorry, the third, <laughs> yes, uh, the first codon is actually in the E, the start codon is in the exit site. The um, blue codon which was our second codon is in the P site and now this third codon is in the A site. Okay, so now what happens is this tRNA, which is now empty and has no amino acid attached to it, that comes out of the E site. That's why it's called the exit site, because tRNAs exit from it. 
And what's ready to happen now is that another amino A cell tRNA can come in and bind in the A site, basically. And then this entire process can begin again, basically. So you can bring in another amino A cell tRNA here. Then peptidyltransferase can transfer, this time, both the... Uh, both of these amino acids now, it can transfer them onto the third one, basically. So, at the moment, what we've got is this tRNA here with one amino acid and then another amino acid off it. So, what you'll do now is cleave this bond here and transfer all of that onto the amino group of the third amino acid. So, you'll get a tripeptide, basically, and you continue on in that process and you build a polypeptide, basically. Okay, and the final thing I think I need to discuss is what actually provides the energy for this uh, translocation here. Well, there is another elongation factor known as elongation factor G, which is usually bound to GTP, and basically it comes and associates with the ribosome, hydrolyzes its GTP to GDP, and that hydrolysis of the GTP to GDP, that provides the energy that is needed to move the ribosome along, basically. So, G, G, uh, elongation factor G bound to GTP goes to elongation factor G bound to GDP along with an inorganic phosphate. And then, to regenerate the elongation factor G with GTP, what you do is you break off that GDP and you bind another GTP back onto the elongation factor G to create the elongation factor G with GTP again, and that means that it can then catalyze another uh, movement along. Okay, so that's the process of uh, translation, and we've seen that the antibiotic chloramphenicol or clomitromycin works by inhibiting the peptidyl, uh, peptidyl transferase, uh, which is this uh, enzyme which synthesizes the peptide links between uh, uh, consecutive amino acids and transfers the polypeptide chain from the amino, uh, tRNA in the P site onto uh, the tRNA in the A site, basically. And if you block that enzyme, you block uh, this transferring of the polypeptide from the tRNA in the P site to the tRNA in the A site, and that blocks elongation of the polypeptide. So you stop protein synthesis. Now, that um, doesn't kill the cell. Cells don't need protein synthesis in order to survive. They've got all their proteins, and they are capable of surviving um, with even though their protein synthesis has been blocked. And what it does mean is that the cells cannot divide, because in order to divide, what you need to do is basically synthesize a whole load of new proteins, because we've got to go from being one cell to being two cells, and that means that you need to have double the amount of proteins, basically. So, um, if you block protein synthesis, it does stop the cell from dividing, and that is why uh, chloramphenicol is a good example of a bacteriostatic antibiotic. So, if you've got a bacterial infection, um, chloramphenicol can be used to stop the bacterial infection getting any larger, and then your immune system will come in and kill the bacteria that are already alive. So it relies on you not being immunosuppressed, basically. Uh, if you are immunosuppressed, then bacteriostatic antibiotics um, may not work effectively, because they do rely on the immune system to be strong as well, and you'll need stronger bactericidal antibiotics.